and tactics. And, and they do have a bunch of, I mean, they, the conspiracy theorists, I mean, just talking about Jade Helm, all, it's so easy for everybody to jump to conclusions. The bottom line is people don't trust the government. You know, wh- and in order for you to even start to begin thinking about the theories that they talk about and, and how Jade Helm and all of these things are preparing for martial law and that Obama's not going to give up his presidency, this whole fear is based off the the fact in, in over a century of lies this by the article, government yeah. that, that have made the people not trust the government. And this article turns it around and is saying, well, you know, the government can't trust the people. Yes. Yes. Also, it's not just conservatives that don't trust the government, by the way. There are plenty of liberals and independents and people in the middle that don't trust the government. Maybe it's for different reasons. Maybe they express it in different ways. Maybe they don't. But I don't people, think anybody trusts the government. Exactly. Also, this article tries to really cavalierly wave away a lot of – it mentions a lot of the stuff that went on 100 years ago, uh, the, get, coming off the gold standard, uh, eliminating militia, a lot of the things that we've talked about here on this radio show that really happened and really did serve to very concretely expand federal power. All of it really happened 100 years ago, and this article kind of tries to just wave all of that away as conspiracy theory. It almost, it's, it's, it's almost like Newspeak. You know, it's almost like 1984 where it's trying to rewrite and redirect history and, again, put all of that. Anytime that anyone wants to try to bring up actual historical fact, this article is going gonna, is gonna to give ammunition to someone and say, oh, you're one of those extremists. What are you going to do, shoot me? It's well, not good for this country. This does not further anything that's good or positive for this country. Well, the truth of the matter is, is it was if it wasn't for freestanding militias like these, we would still be English. We'd still be speaking English. We'd still be speaking English, and thank God we ain't. <laughs> uh, so is that it? Is that all you have to rant about on this? Well, I mean, you know, is I that just— all we have time for you to rant about? Let me, just, let me just close. So like I said, so as I progress through this thing, they moved from—, from Maybe the outliers of the solar system as far as extreme views and everything and really gradually moved inward toward the center. And by the end, I mean, these are just some of the quotes that I pulled out of the last couple paragraphs here. Uh, Statistics show that the violence of right wing extremists goes up when Republicans control at least one house of Congress. That was one quote. Here's another one. Then in 2009, the Republicans directly and almost certainly inadvertently identified themselves as aligned with dangerous radicals. And then finally, it says, uh, oh, wait, no. I copied and pasted the same quote a second time. I don't have the most damning quote of all. But you can see how by the end Uh, of the— I got one for you. The Republicans played a dangerous game by giving credence to all those conspiracy theories about Obama— a game that made them a target of the right-wing rage they engendered. They have been the author of the rise of the radicals, peaceful and violent, that in turn is tearing the party apart. So again, you see what starts off as a chicken little sky is falling piece about the Timothy McVeighs of the world ends up as ultimately an indictment on anything that is conservative or Republican. That is dangerous. That is exactly the kind of conspiracy theory, frothing at the mouth extremism that the article itself is trying to decry. Yeah, and we're not Republicans by any means. No, we're not. But, I mean, damn, you have the right to be Republican and not be lumped in with all the other the kkk know, and timothy and the KKK. <laughs> yeah you do like i said yes it was an interesting article and it was scary as shit so I mean, we should start calling all the liberal democrats rapists because isn't cosby a democrat liberal yeah oh, see oh, there you go a bunch of rapists and baby killers <laughs> yeah so uh you know what that's it that's it for now don't go anywhere we got one final segment for you Go eat some pudding. We've got a great week in weed coming up. I think Dave has a few things to talk about. Uh, I wanted to. I finally sat down this week and I watched the Netflix documentary "Making a Murderer." I haven't and seen it yet. 
you, you should really check it out. I want to. I just want to. I want to touch on it real quick. I'm not going to do any spoilers or anything like that. And uh, who knows? We might mix in something else in there. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to 13 Folds Radio on rifreeradio.org. And in the meantime, here's some shitty music you won't like.
we're back here on 13 folds radio on ri free radio.org and uh i hate to say it but uh we're almost out of time for tonight this is this is our last segment you, does that make you sad dave five one two three four five all right that's fine so yeah i mean we were we were just talking during the break about that article and and i agree with you i think the guy uh, i think the guy undermined his point he how did you were saying yeah yeah he gave <clears throat> by, by by the end there by tying it so much to basic conservatism he he really did completely destroy what might have been an actual powerful piece a statement that that maybe would have had some traction but like i said it scares me because i don't think i don't think the average newsweek reader i don't think the average person that's going to let that kind of a story into their brain i don't think they're going to make that distinction i don't think they're going to read that i think they're going to accept that story in toto into their into their framework of thinking it's the same line of thinking that's gone over the past century of the prohibition against marijuana it's you can see that kind of demonization in prohibition after prohibition really and i think that's a pretty good segue into the week in and now it's time for the week in weed. That is right. It is time for the week in weed. And I found an interesting article about rabbits who have been getting stoned. Oh, do tell. And by the way, you, <laughs> you sounded a little bit like Christopher Walken there. Rabbits. You got rabbits smoking weed, unadulterated sex. That sounds Crazy. like a great time. <laughs> I want to hang out with these rabbits. Where can I find them? Oh, so so I guess there's a DEA DEA agent who um who had a had to give testimony um who's saying that he's there to represent actual science. Um did he use f- finger quotes when he's <laughs> Fairbanks. Yes, he did use finger quotes. I deal in facts. Fairbanks said during the surreal hearing that's happened last March, I deal in science. All right. And <laughs> the science of rabbits. The science <laughs> is about rabbits eating marijuana and getting high. Um, and the FOIA requested that the agency hand over any and all documents showing the effects of marijuana and its legalization. <laughs> 